welcome scholars and guests to this special virtual recognition of Shepherd University's 2020 McMurrin Scholars. We are proud to celebrate your accomplishment and honor of being named a McMurrin Scholar and congratulate you on all your hard work and dedication. You have been on an extraordinary and highly successful academic journey here at Shepherd. Many people have been supporting you in that journey, including your parents, grandparents, relatives, and many friends, and they are now enjoying your success. They are to be congratulated as well on the accomplishment that is being recognized today. I also bring you exciting news from the McMurrin Scholars Association. In 2011, in celebration of the 50th anniversary of the McMurrin Scholar Award, the McMurrin Scholars Association was launched with a special mission to promote and honor scholarly inquiry and academic excellence. For the past 59 years, exceptional Shepherd students have been awarded this special academic tribute. Most noteworthy, the McMurrin Scholars Association has created an endowed scholarship, which is available to all McMurrin scholars who attend Shepherd's graduate program. The scholarship is funded by private gifts from the McMurrin scholars. When the first McMurrin scholar was named, Shepherd's motto was Shepherd Students Succeed. Since that time, McMurrin scholars have certainly personified this motto and have led the way for scholars who have followed in their footsteps. Along with your certificate and hood, you'll also be receiving a pin that was created in honor of the 50th anniversary of this special ceremony. We hope each of you will wear this symbol with pride. The McMurrin Scholars Convocation which honors the academic achievements of these accomplished Shepherd Scholars is one of my favorite moments of the academic year. Congratulations to all of the students who today will become McMurrin Scholars, one of Shepherd University's highest academic honors. In order to become a McMurrin Scholar, students must be nominated by at least three faculty members and arduously vetted through the entire faculty, so only those deemed most academically qualified receive the honor to be called McMurrin Scholar. Scholars, your success is recognized by many people, including family and friends, and I, along with the entire Shepherd University community, offer congratulations to all of you on this outstanding academic accomplishment. The McMurrin Convocation last lecture was established by the Shepherd University Faculty Senate in 2008 to honor an esteemed retiring or retired professor who has served the university and its students through the quality of their teaching, their scholarship, and their service to the campus and to the community. The last lecture is a unique opportunity to share with McMurrin scholars the reflections of Shepherd University faculty representing the best in higher education. On this occasion, we honor you, an extraordinary group of young scholars just setting out on your academic journey. Dr. Jerry Crawley Woods grew up on three continents as an army brand, but has lived most of her life here in West Virginia. Following graduation from the Ludwigsburg American High School in Germany, she completed her undergraduate studies in English literature and sociology at the University of Rhode Island. She began her social work career in the early 1970s, inspired by the life of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., motivated by his untimely death to become an agent of social change and to help build Dr. King's version of the beloved community. She then pursued the Master's of Social Work degree at the Catholic University of America and worked in both public and private social service agencies before joining the faculty of Shepherd College in 1976. Dr. Crawley Woods is currently the longest serving full-time faculty member at the university. And while employed at Shepherd, 
She also pursued doctoral studies at the University of Maryland, earning her PhD in social work in 2000. Dr. Crawley Woods feels privileged to have served the Distinguished Social Work Program as a member of the undergraduate teaching faculty for more than 44 years. Among the many committees on which she has served and chaired, the one that organizes the McMurrin Convocation has been her favorite, and she is so pleased to be asked to deliver the last lecture by her esteemed colleagues. Dr. Crawley Woods has been recognized for her outstanding teaching abilities, having received the Outstanding Faculty Award and the student-nominated Menser Inspirational Teacher Award. In addition to her contributions as a social work educator, she's also a licensed clinician and has been part of private and pastoral therapy practices for many years. In addition to her community-based research, publications, and presentations, and for more than 16 years, she has served as director of the PRIDE program, which trains prospective foster and adoptive parents across a 17-county area from the eastern panhandle of West Virginia to the western part of the state. Significantly, she has been the principal or co-principal investigator for a Title IV-E federal grant which also supports the training of public child welfare workers, and she's done this for more than 26 years. Upon retirement this year, Dr. Crawley Woods plans to continue working in the Burke Street School Promise Neighborhood Initiative and to launch an online self-care and mindfulness service for Shepherd students. She will also continue her most prized role as a grandmother to four young grandchildren. Dr. Crawley Woods. Hello. My colleagues have honored me by asking me to deliver the 2020 last lecture, which traditionally is a presentation about one's professional dis discipline and life's work. Therefore, I have entitled this last lecture, The Love Lecture, to reflect my discipline of social work, which has been characterized as love made visible. This might surprise some of you whose knowledge of social work may be limited to the stereotypes often held in the popular imagination. The man on the street or your Uncle Fred, for instance, may assume that social workers spend most of their time taking people's children away from them or conversely not taking people's children who, away from them who should be removed from abusive or neglectful situations. Social workers and the social welfare system in which they work are sometimes characterized as giving money to people who do not deserve it, or on the other hand, not appropriately subsidizing people who are legitimately in need. However, making love visible is an enterprise that involves much hard and sometimes dangerous work beyond the narrow scope of an uninformed public perception. In this moment in time in which we find ourselves battling a worldwide pandemic, social workers and others in the allied helping professions are on the front lines with healthcare workers, yet they are often working without adequate personal protection equipment as they provide supportive services to both clients and colleagues in medical and residential state settings. In spite of our living and working conditions in this time of corona, Families with infants in a NICU unit still require support and resources. Children continue to be in need of foster care. Adolescents with serious behavioral and developmental issues require specialized residential care. Elders need rehabilitation services and the dying require hospice care. Vulnerable populations of every age who are imprisoned in inpatient psychiatric facilities and substance abuse programs continue to require services. Social workers are in all of these settings, providing support and resources to colleagues as well as clients. Professional caregivers of every discipline are susceptible to compassion fatigue, vicarious traumatization, and burnout. Social workers are often the ones providing the psycho-emotional support to others in these critical circumstances. This is the work of love, sometimes a tough love, providing support, connecting people with needed resources, 
and creating connections which ultimately build what Martin Luther King Jr. called the beloved community, by which he meant a community in which social and economic justice would be equally available to all. The life and tragic death of Dr. King inspired me to commit myself to this goal more than a half a century ago. The profession of social work and my role as a social work educator has given me the tools and the opportunities to be an agent of change and help socialize younger people to be a force for good in a wounded world. The world seems very broken as the beauty of spring unfolds around us, apparently oblivious to the disruption of our ordinary way of being. This is a time which requires a powerful love based on courage in the face of fear, commitment in places of darkness, and hope for our collective future. You may wonder how it came to be that I am asked to speak with you, someone you probably do not know and with whom you have ever studied. After all, social work is on the fringes of the academy, and we do not always have a McMurrin Scholar in the ranks of our students, although I'm proud to tell you that we have two social work majors who are among the scholars this year. The most accurate and perhaps obvious reason that I have the privilege of addressing this virtual assembly is that I was grandmothered in, as is apparent from my appearance. When I first arrived here on campus, which was then Shepherd College, our sitting president, Mary J.C. Hendricks, had just graduated two years before in 1974 and gone off to establish a stellar career in the wider world. Most of the time she was away, I was here in a much smaller world, pursuing what I think of as a long and undistinguished career, pursuing a labor of love in obscurity. I and most of your faculty have worked for love and not for money. After a youth spent across the globe in a military family, I have now lived in the same house, the same marriage, and the same job for over four decades. And I have often been asked, how could you teach those same required social work courses over and over again? But it was never the same. It was always new. The students, the books, the new developments in social work knowledge and practice interventions in my ever-changing profession. My work as a social work educator in these last 44 years has given me a sense of generative joy. And this is in large measure because of students like you who are so capable of learning and pursuing an inner life of study and contemplation combined with an outer life of service and connection to others. At the time of my arrival at Shepherd in 1976, William Riley, professor of psychology, who was instrumental in establishing this tradition of the McMurrin uh, a Scholars Award, was also still on campus, but retired soon thereafter. And I remember in his remarks at the recognition of his retirement before the assembly of faculty and staff, he said very simply, thank you for the pleasure of your company. I did not fully appreciate his sentiment at the, that time as a newly minted faculty member and it seems like a courtly and old-fashioned phrase, but I do understand it now, and I want to convey that same sentiment on behalf of your admiring faculty. Thank you for the pleasure of your company. One of the secrets I have held in my heart and never said aloud to a class for fear of unnecessarily alarming them, but I'm risking telling you now, is that as a social work educator and teacher, I am prepared to love my students. That is to say, I'm intensely committed to their personal and professional growth. I have attempted to encourage their sense of vocation, to discern their calling to that place where the world's greatest need and their deepest joy intersects. In the psychological theory of Eric Erickson, he defined love as the ability for the sustained care of the other without fear of losing the self. Teaching, parenting, and being a member of the helping professions of all kinds requires the sustained care of others. Most of you will pursue professional lives that are not directly connected 
to the allied helping professions such as education, healthcare, and social services. But no matter what your work is, you can bring help and healing to a wounded world. Our beautiful blue planet is threatened by macro forces which create fear about the implications of global climate change as biologists do document the decline of biodiversity and environmentalists combat the corruption of habitats and the pollution of air and water all over the world. We are in the throes of a global pandemic and find ourselves sequestered and practicing social isolation and social distancing. But the array of disciplines we love and pursue can bring the power of change to this planet. All of the disciplines we represent can bring the light of consciousness and the lamp of knowledge to the problems that we face, both individually and collectively. Ultimately, it was neither the realm of the precious person nor the sometimes precarious environment that anchored my attention, but rather the intersection between the person and the environment, which is where the rubber meets the road in my beloved discipline of social work. The use of this dual perspective in teaching students to do critical assessments of biopsychosocial and spiritual functioning and staging interventions which take into account both the protective and risk factors in the environment, as well as the inner resources of mind, body, and spirit. This has been the most engaging focal point for me. Social work assessment involves seeing the world with the lens of paradox, embracing an and both stance rather than the false this or that of dualistic thinking. Teaching good students is a great joy, but the tariff of this profession is grading and it can be an onerous task. Good papers are the easiest ones to grade. Grading the papers of the best students is like being in a secret society where everyone knows the password. You have all acquired the secret decoder ring of good composition. Papers like yours keep your teachers from running screaming into the night. I used to say to my students who were about to graduate, I shall miss you, but I shall not miss your papers. But in fact, as the years have gone by and my husband has shifted his threat to burying me with student papers to burying me with my computer, I realize that those papers have kept me company, sometimes in the dead of the night when I am grading in the dark night of the soul at 3 a.m. in the morning. You are a McMurrin scholar because if you ever got a B, it was only one or two, not a hive. A couple of years ago, a social work student who had studied with me in a particularly difficult course was awarded the recognition as a McMurrin scholar. It was only then that I realized we, why he'd been so very upset with a course grade of a high B. It was because it was the only one he had ever received. Even beyond a GPA above summa cum laude, you are a McMurrin scholar because you were engaged in the liberal arts, not only in the subjects of the focus of your major areas of study. You are a McMurrin scholar because your entire faculty recognizes your inclination for inquiry and discernment, your potential to enter deeply into the life of the mind. You are a McMurrin scholar because you are tied to this place in time. So I close knowing that your faculty and my colleagues join me in saying, thank you for the pleasure of your company. We shall miss you, and in your case, we shall also miss your papers. Godspeed and namaste. Biology department and I have the honor and privilege of recognizing Miss Alexis Lexi Fritz, McMurrin Scholar. She came to Shepherd from Musselman High with the goal of gaining admission to medical school. She has excelled in her academic work as a biology major. Her scholarly work includes a summer internship at the National Cancer Institute, and two semesters of following fruit fly mating behavior in a department biology lab. Lexi shared a story with me that demonstrates her dedication to science. She was driving back to campus one wintry night, and to avoid a deer, she swerved and drove straight into a pond. Unhurt, but partially submerged in freezing water, 
and unable to get out of the car, she waited for help to arrive. She waited so long that her clothes froze on her. Well, the EMTs eventually did arrive and pull her to safety. Then, Lexi, the EMT, had a conversation that started off something like this. EMT, ma'am, we're going to have to take you to the hospital for a 24-hour observation. Lexi, no, no, please don't take me there. I have a science lab tomorrow morning. I have to go. Lexi came through the experience in fine health and without a gap in her science lab knowledge. Lexi Fritz aspires to channel her respect for life and love of science to a career as a dermatologist specializing in skin cancers. Congratulations, Lexi. We wish you all the success that you so rightfully deserve. Hello, this is Dr. Laura Robertson from the biology department at Shepherd University. I'm delighted to congratulate uh, Ashley Lashinsky on her McMurrin Award. Ashley is working towards a double major in biology and music. This has been an incredible amount of work for Ashley. She's put in lots of time in her lab courses and has also performed in many, uh, many concerts. Ashley uh, has been a delight in classes. I've really enjoyed having her in my classes. She did such a great job that I recruited her to work as a peer tutor. She's also worked as a RA in the dorms, and she's very active in her sorority. She's been in, on the executive board of Delta Zeta. She had an exciting opportunity to work as an intern during the summer at the National Cancer Institute, where she learned many uh, preparatory techniques for taking pictures of viruses through uh, electron microscopy. This uh, experience will help her in her long-term career goals. She would like to work as a physician. Um, it's The McMurrins are a bit of a nostalgic uh, situation. It's always a delight to congratulate our wonderful students, but it's also a sad time because we're going to miss them. They're going to move on and we will miss seeing them. I'd like to congratulate all of our McMurrin students and I hope that everybody is uh, safe and well at home in this odd time. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Jonathan Gilkerson, and I'm a professor in the biology department. It's my privilege to be able to introduce to you my research student, Michael Watcher, as a 2020 McMurrin Scholar. Not only am I acquainted with Mike as a research student in my lab, I've also had Mike in class for cell biology and molecular biology. So I know firsthand that Mike embodies all the characteristics that a McMurrin scholar is expected to have. Not only does he excel academically, he also has been a student leader on campus, serving on the Student Government Association, but also in a number of different clubs and organizations. Beyond that, Mike is just a really curious person, which is a really good characteristic to have if you're a biology major. So not only has Mike worked in my lab studying plant growth and development, before that he worked during the summer at WVU studying mitochondria and reactive oxygen species. After he graduates, Mike intends to study medicine and is currently applying to medical school. Once he finishes medical school, his ultimate aspiration is to serve in the United States Army Medical Corps as a physician. So I'd like to congratulate Mike on all of his accomplishments and hard work that he's put into his education here at Shepherd. I know once he graduates that he'll go on to do lots of great things. So with that, Thank you. Richard Robinson is the son of Tracy Brady Robinson of Matthias, West Virginia. Richard, a graduate of East Hardy High School, will graduate from Shepherd University in December 2020 with a major in business administration, a concentration in management, and a minor in athletic coaching. Ricky is also a student in the Shepherd 4 Plus 1 MBA program and plans to complete his MBA after his bachelor's degree. Ricky intends to use his business degrees along with his leadership and teamwork skills 
to become an upper level manager in a successful company. Richard has been the recipient of a number of scholarships, including the Dean Scholarship and the T. Edward Stotler Memorial Scholarship. Ricky, a member of the Shepherd University football team, was a 2019 First Team COSIDA Academic All-American and a 2019 First Team COSIDA Academic All-District. Ricky has served as leader on the Shepherd Athletic Council and as the football team captain. Stay safe, Ricky. Tiffany Warnick is the daughter of James Warnick and the late Joanne Warnick of Grantsville, Maryland. Tiffany, a graduate of Northern Garrett High School, will graduate from Shepherd University in May 2020 with a major in business administration, concentration in general business, and a minor in recreation and leisure studies. Tiffany received her associate's degree in marketing management and her associate's degree in business administration from Hagerstown Community College in 2018. She is a member of the Tau Sigma National Honor Society and the Phi Kappa Phi Honor Society. Over the past two years, Tiffany has been the recipient of a number of scholarships, including the Burkhart Legacy Scholarship, the Dave and Roselle Leatherman Scholarship, and the World War I Remembrance Scholarship. While pursuing her associate and bachelor's degrees, Tiffany has developed her management, business, and people skills working as an operations manager at SkyZone, where she plans to continue her employment while pursuing a master's degree in business administration with a concentration in marketing. Good luck, Tiffany. So this is the McMurrin citation for Michaela Emery. Uh, Michaela came to Shepherd having left uh, Faith Christian Academy in 2016. She's the daughter of Paula and Rodney Emery and she is my advisee and uh, I worked with her as an honor student and I think uh, that she is uh, quite a very good uh, representative of the McMurrin Scholars. She did her honors work uh, working with means to try to prevent uh, contamination in fruits using uh, UVC radiation and when she leaves Shepherd, uh, which she did in December I guess, she graduated in December, she's now going up to Pennsylvania where she's going to enter into a physician assistance program and I think that her patients and her colleagues are going to be very lucky to have Michaela as a colleague. This is the um, McMurrin citation for uh, Amy Phillip who's one of my advisees. Uh, Amy came to us after graduating from Spring Mills High School in 2017. She's the daughter of Maria and Petra Philip, and uh, she's been working with me quite a while now and her goal in life eventually is to become a pharmacist. When she graduates from Shepherd in uh, December of 2020, she'll then be moving up into Pennsylvania. Uh, she's quite amazing in that she's not only planning graduation, she's also planning a wedding at exactly the same time. And so she and her husband will be moving up to Philadelphia area probably to do some work. And uh, I think she's going to be an excellent pharmacist and I wish her well for her future. Hello, I'm here today to tell you a little bit about Ellie George. Ellie has been a student in several of my classes, and the thing that has most impressed me is her eagerness to learn new things. Ellie's the daughter of Christine and Dennis George of Hedgesville. Her mother, Christine, is a graduate of Shepherd University. Ellie was homeschooled before coming to Shepherd, and at Shepherd, she's been a chemistry major and has a minor in English. She will graduate from Shepherd in May after only three years. Despite cramming all the coursework in just three years, she's been very active in other ways. She's been a tutor in the Academic Support Center in both chemistry and math. She also was awarded a NASA fellowship for tutoring in chemistry. She's been a very active member of the student affiliate of the American Chemical Society at Shepherd this year, serving as its vice president. After graduation, Ellie plans to take some time off to explore other opportunities, but eventually plans to go to graduate school. Hello, the Department of Contemporary Art and Theater is pleased to present Skyla Heiss. Skyla Heiss is a passionate, creative woman integrating her love for 
storytelling with user experience, design, and photography. She is a member of Tau Sigma National Honor Society, Phi Kappa Phi Honor Society, and is currently a member of Sans Mercy as an editor. She is an avid volunteer, and she is the co-owner of Little Bear Apiary. The department looks forward to seeing all that she creates. Congratulations, Skyla. The Department of Contemporary Art and Theater is pleased to present Molly Henry. Molly Henry has been active engaged in so many things that I'm pretty sure you've all seen her work. She has contributed to Vagina Monologues, Seating Your Future, and Sans Merci. Most recently, she's worked with the National Park Service to honor women in celebration of the 100th anniversary of the 19th Amendment. After graduation, she will relocate to Hampton Roads where we are certain she will continue with her creative endeavors. Congratulations, Molly. The Department of Contemporary Art would like to present Eliza Lathrop. Eliza gracefully balances her academics, studio work, and service in the arts. The department is appreciative for her service throughout the years as a painting studio assistant and mentor to her peers. The faculty are looking forward to following her career as she builds makerspace and gallery in her hometown. We wish her only the best. Congratulations, Eliza. Hi, my name is Karen Adams. I'm an associate professor of mathematics at Shepherd University. It's my pleasure to introduce Emma Bernadoni as a McMurrin Scholar. Emma is a secondary education major, pursuing a teaching certification in mathematics phi through adult. Emma is from Walkersville, Maryland, where she graduated from Walkersville High School with the highest honors. She's the daughter of Elizabeth and Colin Bernadoni. Emma is an exceptional scholar and a very dedicated athlete. She's in the honors program at Shepherd University and is a member of both Phi Kappa Phi and Kappa Delta Phi. Her education advisor wrote that, quote, Emma is one of the best students I have ever worked with. She's not only book smart and dedicated to excellence, but she has all the interpersonal skills necessary to make the cooperating teachers, the middle school students, and the university supervisors all very proud of her. Her attention to detail is outstanding as she collaborates with others to prepare top-notch instruction for her public school students. She has a great rapport with all students, end quote. Upon graduation, Emma plans to, career, to pursue a career as a middle school mathematics teacher, and eventually she hopes to complete a master's degree in special education specifically focused on autism spectrum disorder. I'm confident that Emma will be an outstanding educator and a leader amongst the education community. Her students will be forever positively impacted because of her dedication and commitment. I speak with the entire mathematics and math mathematics and education department at Shepherd University and wishing her the very best in her future endeavors. Thank you. Congratulations Portia Dobrzhansky and her parents Paul and Chandra Dobrzhansky of Hagerstown, Maryland. Portia came to Shepherd from Williamsport High School where she took two years of courses at Hagerstown Community College while remaining active on high school sports teams and clubs. At Shepherd she's a computer information technology major with a high GPA. Among her accomplishments, she presented one of her term papers at the 2020 West Virginia Undergraduate Literary Symposium. She's a diligent member of the Disabilities Advocacy Group, Sigma 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 Sorority, and the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. She's been accepted into the Masters of Arts in Teaching program here at Shepherd, and that program begins this summer. After getting her master's degree, she'd like to pursue a career in the computing fields as a business analyst and eventually as a program manager. Good luck, Portia. Stephen Griffin hails from Cattaraugus, New York. He graduated from Cattaraugus Little Valley High School before coming to Shepherd University. Stephen decided to attend Shepherd based on several recommendations. During his time here, Stephen has excelled in his classes and has exhibited an eagerness to learn both in the classroom and in the external projects he's undertaken. Upon graduation from Shepherd, Stephen will attend graduate school. Congratulations, Stephen. Congratulations, McCary Myers. Congratulations to her parents, Rick and Kelly Myers of Martinsburg, West Virginia. McCary graduated from Spring Mills High School here in Berkeley County. She's been around Shepherd for a long time because her grandmother worked here. She'd been planning to attend Shepherd College, and lo and behold, she attended Shepherd University instead. After graduation, McCary would like to continue her studies. She'd like to get a master's degree 
and become a researcher in the field of bioinformatics. Good luck, McCary. Congratulations to Va and Tui Trang Nguyen, parents of Alexander Nguyen. Alex graduated from Washington County Technical High School in Hagerstown, Maryland. He was inspired by the programming classes he took there. He decided to become a computer science major at Shepherd University. During his time at Shepherd, he's been on the Dean's List every semester. He plans a career as a software engineer, and he wanted us to point out that he enjoys playing video games of all genres. Congratulations, Alex. Heidi Reichert, who hails from Charlestown, West Virginia, graduated high school from the American Community School in Amman. Heidi chose to attend Shepherd University due to its proximity to both family and Washington, D.C., as well as the benefits offered by the university, in particular its honors program. Heidi, a mathematics major here at Shepherd, is an outstanding student who currently maintains an overall GPA of 3.93. Upon graduation from Shepherd, Heidi intends to pursue graduate work where she hopes to focus on artificial intelligence and data applications. Congratulations, Heidi. Brian Crutchley comes to us from Annapolis, Maryland. He graduated from Annapolis High School before coming to Shepherd University. He chose Shepherd because of recommendations by Shepherd alumni and also because it is a place where he could learn from highly accomplished professors in small class settings. Brian is an excellent student who has eagerly and successfully engaged in a variety of mathematics and computer science projects during his time here at Shepherd. Upon graduation from Shepherd, Brian will pursue a career in cybersecurity, where he hopes to do work as a malware analyst. Congratulations, Brian. Jillian Apricot Barr is the daughter of April and Brian Barr and is a graduate of Greencastle Atrium Senior High School and a native of Greencastle, Pennsylvania. Jillian is a member of the Kappa Delta Pi, Phi Kappa Phi, and Phi Alpha Theta Academic Honor Societies. She served as an officer in Kappa Delta Pi. Jillian was nominated and served as a student representative on the Educator Preparation Program Council. Jillian earned recognition from the Education Testing Service for her high score on the Social Studies Praxis exam, earning their Recognition of Excellence Award. After Jillian's December graduation, she was immediately hired by Washington County Schools as a social studies teacher at Northern Middle School in Hagerstown, Maryland. This hiring was based upon Jillian's innovative approaches displayed during her student teaching at both the high and middle school levels in Washington County. Jillian's future plans include completing both her master's and doctorate degrees in education. Congratulations, Jillian. On behalf of the School of Education, it is my honor to introduce our McMurrin Scholars for Elementary Education. Mariah Bailey. Mariah is the daughter of George and Kay Bailey. She is a senior elementary education major and will student teach in fall 2020. Mariah describes herself as driven. She thinks very deeply about what she is learning and that leads to asking more questions. It is as though her appetite for learning is never satisfied. She is always engaged in course readings and research, and she looks forward to collaborating with her peers and her professors. She is a member of Kappa Delta Pi, Delta Psi Chapter, and International Honor Society in Education. Mariah's future plans include teaching in an elementary school and pursuing a master's degree in either reading education, literacy, or education administration. Qualities that Mariah has embodied during her time at Shepherd and will carry into her future are being passionate, a leader, responsible, and a communicator. Congratulations, Mariah. Jennifer Drummond. Jennifer is the daughter of Thomas and Cynthia Drummond. She is a senior elementary education major and was student teaching this semester. Jennifer graduated from Musselman High School. She has been the recipient of many scholarships during her time at Shepherd. Her professors describe her as someone who thinks outside the box. One of her strengths is to make insightful connections between different course readings and what she has learned in various classes to help her solve problems. 
It's always exciting to watch Jennifer apply her learning when she is teaching children. Qualities that Jennifer has embodied during her time at Shepherd and will carry into her future are being collaborative, resilient, and always open to new ideas and opportunities as they arise. Congratulations, Jennifer. Jay Neil Minnick is the son of Jay and Sherry Minnick. Jay Minnick is a graduate of Boonesboro High School and a native of Sharpsburg, Maryland. Before attending Shepherd, Jay Minnick served in the United States Marine Corps for five years. Jay is a member of the Phi Kappa Phi and Kappa Delta Pi Academic Honor Societies. In 2019, Jay Minnick was recognized by the Shepherd University School of Education as the most persistent and dedicated teacher candidate. This dedication was shown during Jay's student teaching as he was requested to assist in leading an examination of primary source documents for local high schoolers. During student teaching, Jay's ancient history plans reflected such a high level of content organization that major portions were actually adopted by his placement as being required instruction. After his December graduation, Jay began work on his master's degree in ancient through Reformation history. Jay plans on being a social studies teacher while pursuing his graduate degree. Congratulations, Jay. Christopher Allen Parker is the son of Ann and Tim Parker. Christopher is a graduate of Martinsburg High School in Martinsburg, West Virginia, and a native of Corpus Christi, Texas. Before attending Shepherd, Christopher served in the United States Marine Corps for four years with overseas deployments in Afghanistan, Korea, and Okinawa. He is a member of the Kappa Delta Pi Academic Honor Society. Christopher's role as a growing educator is seen in his dedication and participation in multiple K through 12 activities. This includes serving as a coach of the Martinsburg High School wrestling team. Christopher's work in the classroom and in the field has been noted and recognized by administrators and professionals as being of high caliber and reflecting a scholarly approach. These observations were reinforced when Christopher's submitted lesson plans for certification were scored as being of a strong quality. Christopher's future plans include teaching secondary social studies and attending graduate school. Congratulations, Christopher. Allison Spade. Allie is the daughter of Jill Keller Rika and Warren Spade. She is a junior elementary education major and is currently completing pedagogy coursework. Allie graduated from Smithsburg High School and is a native of Smithsburg, Maryland. She is a member of Phi Kappa Phi Honor Society and is in the Honors College. She's also a member of Ram Band and plays a clarinet and has also performed for the Wind Ensemble. Allie embodies what it truly means to be a lifelong learner. Allie views learning as unavoidable. There doesn't need to be a reason for learning because learning is rewarding in itself. This is why she says that teaching means that she can reach many little heads and hearts to hopefully make them love learning and love school the way she does. <clears throat> Allie plans to teach at an elementary school and pursue a master's degree in education administration and become a school principal. Congratulations, Allie. Bethany Starlipper. Bethany is the daughter of Jay and Donna Starlipper. She is a senior elementary education major and was student teaching this semester. Bethany graduated from Williamsport High School and is a native of Williamsport, Maryland. She has been the recipient of the President's Scholarship every semester during her time at Shepherd. One of the many qualities that Bethany embodies is being a leader. Bethany has the ability to set a goal and then work within the realities that present in any situation. She is always open to new ideas and can work with many different personalities. She was able to hone many of her leadership skills by being the president of Kappa Delta Pi Delta Psi Chapter which is an International Honor Society in Education. Bethany wants to teach at an elementary school and pursue a master's degree in education. Other qualities that she embodies and will carry into her future are being collaborative, determined, and focused. Congratulations, Bethany.
Rachel Stottlemeyer. Rachel is the daughter of Frank Cantina Stottlemeyer. She is a senior elementary education major and was student teaching this semester. Rachel graduated from Hedgesville High School and is a native of Hedgesville, West Virginia. She is a member of Kappa Delta Pi, Delta Psi chapter, and International Honor Society in Education. Rachel sets high goals for herself as she does not let anything hold her back. What makes Rachel successful in achieving her goals is that she has a positive attitude and a growth mindset. She demonstrates through all she does that effort is a pathway to mastery and that mistakes are an inevitable part of that path. In addition to working as an elementary school teacher, Rachel wants to write a children's book. Other qualities that she will carry into her future include being determined, caring for others, and making a positive impact wherever she goes. Congratulations, Rachel. Hello, my name is James Pate. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of English and Modern Languages. And today I'm presenting the citation for Bethany Castle. Bethany Castle was homeschooled through high school. Her mother is Melinda Haynes, and her mother's husband is Aaron Haynes. She is a member of the Honors Program and has been involved in the Brood Mechanicals Theater Troupe. Her literary work has been published in Sound Mercy. In 2019, Bethany won the first prize for outstanding presentation at the 27th Annual West Virginia Literary Symposium. Bethany has excelled as both a scholar and creative writer during her time at Shepherd. Her scholarly interests include Gothic literature, and weird fiction, and as a fiction writer, her work has explored mythologies, burial rites, and gender dynamics. We are very proud to have Bethany Castle in our department. Hello, I'm Timothy Nixon with the Department of English and Modern Languages at Shepherd University. On behalf of my colleagues, I would like to recognize Linnea Meyer, one of this year's McMurrin Scholars. Linnea, for those of us who've had the opportunity of hearing her present critical scholarship in regional and state level conferences, is an amazingly intelligent woman. She's also incredibly talented. Those of us who have heard her read from her creative writing uh, can attest to this. I first met Linnea in the fall of 2016. She was a student in my Honors 205 class. Each of the students that semester was required to make a presentation on uh, cultural information or scientific information that contributed to our understanding of the texts we were reading together as a class. Linnea's presentation was on epilepsy. It was related to a novel that we were discussing. Linnea's presentation struck me for a number of reasons. She covered the information on the neurological occurrences uh, when one is experiencing an epileptic seizure. And she also talked about the physiological manifestations of epilepsy, but she devoted a segment of her presentation to what we, the audience, should do if we ever encounter an individual experiencing an epileptic seizure. I was struck, and that cemented in my mind the kind of person that Linnea is, outwardly focused, constantly questioning what she could do to help others and to serve the community. Beyond that, one other aspect of Linnea's personality that I would like to draw attention to is her sense of humor. Her family and she might not appreciate the descriptor of a devilish wit, but it certainly applies in Linnea's case. She has a very sharp sense of humor. Uh, it's well aimed. Uh, it never comes from a place of, uh, of uh, hostility, um, but it often at times is accompanied by uh, a wry grin and an askance look. Linnea, you deserve this recognition. You make us so proud and we're very happy for you. Congratulations. It is my pleasure to introduce Virginia Robbins as a McMurrin Scholar this year. She's a lifelong educator from Hedgesville, West Virginia, who will soon have the degree to match her experience. Virginia's education roots run deep. She homeschooled her two children, Michael and Matthew, and passed on her love of learning to them. She has been married to her husband, David, for 26 years, and after a 27-year hiatus from formal schooling to focus on her family, Virginia enrolled in Blue Ridge Community and Technical College in 2016 and eventually transferred to Shepherd to finish her degree. And we are really grateful she chose us. 
Virginia is the kind of student you want in your classes. She works hard, she's always prepared, and she provides leadership to her classmates that help them to ask meaningful questions and help them to understand what's being covered. She herself asks questions and encourages her teachers to think about the value of their lessons and the power of their pedagogy. I've had the, the pleasure of having Virginia in my many classes and seeing her name listed on my roster always gets me a little more excited to teach that particular class. She credits her desire to learn and to keep asking questions to her mother. Virginia is humble, she's giving, and she always has a kind word and some sort of praise to share with her teachers and her classmates. She really is a fantastic person and is already a talented teacher to which her own children can attest. Virginia plans to pursue a master's in curriculum design and technology and to continue to add her rich perspective to many classes and classrooms to come. We have no doubt in the department that she will accomplish much and will enrich the lives of her own students as she has ours. My name is Carrie Messenger. I'm an associate professor in the Department of English and Modern Languages, and I am presenting Fiona Tracy. Fiona Tracy is a poet. When she writes poetry, she says that she feels she is both the most complex and most simple form of herself. She says her poetry allows her to incorporate all the parts of herself, and it is then she feels the most whole. The daughter of Colleen and Christopher Tracy, Fiona attended Jefferson High School. While at Shepherd, Fiona was an extremely active member of the Department of English and Modern Languages while minoring in Spanish and psychology. She presented papers at the Discovering the Humanities Conference at Hood College and the West Virginia Literary Symposium at Fairmont State University. She was a member of Sigma Del Delta, interned for the Society of Creative Writing, worked in the department newsletter, and was a senior poetry editor for Sans Merci. Outside of the English department, Fiona sang with the Masterworks Chorale and had three jobs while maintaining her GPA, working as a writing tutor in the Academic Support Center, a waiter at Hecho in Mexico, and a barista at Starbucks. Fiona hopes to pursue an MFA in creative writing after graduation. No matter what, she will continue to write poetry. We have been so pr proud to work with her. Hi, my name is Jeff Groff. I'm Associate Professor of Physics and Chair of Environmental and Physical Sciences. I feel tremendous pride in our students this time of year, and this is especially true of our Environmental Studies McMurrin Scholars. And it's my pleasure to introduce them to you now. Caitlin Jewell Barnes. Not only is Caitlin a fine student, she's also an accomplished researcher. Work that she's done on spotted lanternflies with entomologists at the USDA Appalachian Fruit Research Center in Carneysville. It's been presented at academic conferences and submitted for publication. I can't think of an environmental studies major in recent memory who has had as much success or experience doing research as Caitlin. Alyssa Brooke Murray. Alyssa is a great student and is also one of the most inquisitive students I've met. She's explored a variety of interests while studying at Shepherd. She learned land management practices while interning with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and studied, has studied fisheries management for her capstone research project on Menhaden harvest in the Chesapeake Bay. After graduating, Alyssa aims to study marine biology in graduate school. Daniel Lewis Speck. Not only is Daniel an accomplished student, he is also a capable builder and maker. And his skills have been very much appreciated at the Agricultural Research Center at Tabler Farm, where he's contributed to the building of aquaponics systems in our uh, agricultural lab. Daniel's capstone research involved the study of human-bear interactions which is applicable to his uh, goal of a career in natural resource management or wildlife management. Jennifer Marie Willett. Jen is a great student in the classroom, but her favorite classroom is nature. I've never seen Jen more engaged or enthusiastic than when she was wandering through fields of wildflowers in the mountains of Yellowstone during our class trip there last summer. After graduation, uh, Jen aims to continue sharing her enthusiasm for the environment and nature with young people by continuing her work as an environmental educator. So congratulations again 
to all four of these fine environmental studies students. For these students being recognized as a McMurrin Scholar is very much deserved. Thank you. It is a pleasure to introduce 2020 McMurrin Scholar, Ashley Berger. Ashley Berger is a native of West Virginia and is the daughter of Todd and Julie Berger. Ashley graduated from Spring Mills High School in 2017. Ashley is a health promotion and exercise science major. While attending Shepherd University, Ashley has played for the Shepherd University women's softball team as an infielder. In 2019, Ashley appeared in all 60 games and was named to the MEC All-Tournament team. Ashley has been a major contributor to Shepherd University as an athletic and academic leader. Academically, Ashley has thrived maintaining a 3.8 overall and a 3.86 area GPA. In April, Ashley is to be inducted into the Phi Kappa Phi Honor Society. Upon graduation, Ashley plans to pursue a career in occupational therapy. Ashley would like to thank her parents as well as her siblings, coaches, teammates, and professors for her Shepherd University success. Congratulations, Ashley. It is a pleasure to introduce 2020 McMurrin Scholar, Catherine Eddy. Catherine is from Charleston, West Virginia, and is the daughter of Brian and Lisa Eddy. Kate graduated from George Washington High School and is a health promotion exercise science major. Kate has played for Shepherd University women's soccer team for three years as a midfielder. In addition to her athletic accomplishments, Kate has maintained a 4.0 area GPA and a 3.92 overall GPA. Upon graduation, Kate plans to further education and pursue the career of physical therapy. Kate has been a quiet but instrumental leader in the HYPEX program. Kate would like to thank her professors, parents and siblings and teammates of the Shepherd University women's soccer team. Congratulations, Catherine. Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Arnetta Fletcher, faculty member of the School of Recreation, Sport and Exercise Sciences. I have the pleasure and honor of introducing Andrea Ewers as McMurrin Scholar. She was born and raised in Berkeley Springs, West Virginia. She is the proud daughter of Kate Eiler and Robert Ewers. She's also a spouse to Liam Faith. Andrea graduated from Berkeley Springs High School and joined the Shepherd community in fall of 2016. She's a family and consumer sciences major and minor in nutrition. She participates in Bikers Helping Sick Kids, a nonprofit organization who's benefited from her volunteer work for the past five years. In addition to her high academic performance and roles in the community, She's also been awarded numerous scholarships and awards, one of which has been the James and Catherine Moeller Scholarship. Upon graduation, Andrea hopes to pursue careers in community nutrition. Her career aspirations include working with women, infants, and children. She sends a special thank you to her family, friends, spouse, and staff and faculty at the School of Recreation, Sport, and Exercise Sciences. Thank you. It is a pleasure to introduce the 2020 McMurrin Scholar, Carly Gagliardo. Carly is the daughter of Chris and Tracy Gagliardo and is from Cape and Bridge, West Virginia. Carly graduated from Hampshire High School in 2016 and while attending university, Carly has been a high academic achiever. Carly has maintained the Dean's List from 2016 to 2020, both fall and spring semesters. Additionally, Carly is a member of the Pi Kappa Phi Honor Society, and Carly leads an active campus life while being a member of the Delta Zeta Greek Society. Carly was accepted into the Shenandoah University Occupational Therapy Programme and begins her journey in August of 2020. Lastly, Carly would like to thank her parents and brother for their constant support. A special thanks to Angel Dehaven, Elisa Rausch, Josh Medina, Ashley McMamini, Rayanne Orndorff, and Travis Elsia for making her Shepherd University experience amazing. Carly would also like to thank Professor Graham for answering numerous amounts of emails and questions. 
Lastly, I'd like to thank God for providing me the knowledge and strength through my experience at Shepherd University. Congratulations, Carly. Hi, I'm Julia Sandy, Associate Professor of History. I'm pleased on behalf of both the Departments of History and English and Modern Languages to present McMurrin Scholar, Alison Brashears. Alison has been a standout student from the first day she arrived at Shepherd. She has demonstrated a lively intelligence and a remarkable work ethic, and she can always be counted on for quiet leadership in class discussions and group projects. A double major in history and English, she has excelled at both. She's a member of Sigma Tau Delta and Phi Alpha Theta, the English and History Honor Societies, respectively. She's presented at academic conferences and is an editor for the student-run creative arts magazine at Shepherd. But what makes Allison truly remarkable is her spirit of adventure. While at Shepherd, she traveled to Cuba to explore Cuban history, culture, and architecture. This spirit also led her to choose an internship with the state of New York, where she worked to do hands-on restoration of one of the Adirondack great camps. In her history capstone, which was based on this experience, she explored how American women in the late 19th century used society's newfound fascination with outdoor leisure to challenge traditional gender expectations. Her English capstone is on historical fiction, combining both of her majors and interests. Allison is the daughter of Ricky and Lisa Brashears, and she graduated from Boonesboro High School. Upon graduation, she will start an apprenticeship with the Historic Preservation Training Center of the National Park Service, working in the Environmental Stewards Program. Congratulations, Allison. We will miss you very much on campus. And I'm pleased to present from our department, McMurrin Scholar, Paul Koblenz. Paul is the son of Joseph and Lori Koblenz of Middletown, Maryland. He graduated from Wellspring Christian Family Schools before coming to Shepherd University. Paul brought to every class a lively personality and a remarkable work ethic, which is reflected in his list of accomplishments at Shepherd. Majoring in history and concentrating in 19th century America and Civil War studies, Paul excelled academically. Generous in spirit, courteous in manner, and professional in comportment, he has assumed leadership roles to better those around him as witnessed especially in his volunteer work at local historic sites, such as Antietam National Battlefield, and in his dedicated work at Scarborough Library's Special Collections. Through assignments and classroom participation, Paul has demonstrated an enthusiasm for learning about military history across time and place. In his capstone paper, he thoughtfully detailed how military leadership and battlefield deaths shaped the course of the 1862 Maryland campaign and the Battle of South Mountain. Upon graduation, Paul will work to achieve his goal of seeking a public history career related to American history and the Civil War era. Congratulations, Paul. Megan Malone is a graduate of Northeast High School and the daughter of Andy and David Malone. Megan is pursuing a Bachelor of Music Education degree and is a member of the Honors Program, recently completing her honors thesis on a Beethoven trio. She performs with the Shepherd University Ram Band, Wind Ensemble, Orchestra, Woodwind Quintet, and Bassoon Trio. She is a member of Sigma Alpha Iota and Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society. After graduation, Megan plans to teach elementary school and have a side hustle on Etsy selling her amazing arts and crafts. In addition to being an outstanding bassoonist, Megan is also a mean foosball player. Please join me in congratulating Megan Malone. Hi, I'm Dr. Yoshan Liao from School of Music. It is my honor to introduce you, Corinne Myers. Corinne is very dedicated, talented, hardworking, reliable, and organized. I cannot wait to see what future holds for her. Please join me to congratulate Corinne Myers on this very well-deserved recognition. Sophie Palmer is the daughter of Tracy and Walter Palmer of Shepherdstown, West Virginia. Both parents are graduates of Shepherd University. Ms. Palmer graduated from Hedgesville High School and she has been a Bachelor of Music Education student at Shepherd. She is the recording secretary for the University Chapter of the National Association for Music Education and a collegiate member of the Music Teachers National Association. She is currently the choir director of the Moeller Avenue Church of the Brethren in Martinsburg. She teaches private piano and voice lessons in the Shepherd Community Music Program. Ms. Palmer is in the Shepherd Honors Program and has sung in the Masterworks Chorale and in Camerata. 
she plans to earn a master's degree in choral music education and then teach secondary choral music. I'm Dr. Lindsay Levitan of the Department of Psychology, and it is my honor to present to you Connor Skillman as a McMurrin Scholar. Connor is a skilled and intelligent student, always quick with an answer or a question or a cheerful rejoiner. You can read about his accomplishments in the program, but what really sets Connor apart is his response to a challenge. Where other students slow down and become uncertain, Connor kicks into gear. He thrives on it. As an example, we've been collaborating on a project examining the details of how social influence can help strengthen attitudes influence on behavior. In this case, how agreement with others can help people who know exercise is good for them actually exercise. I told Connor he needed to find some better measures of health attitudes and behaviors. Connor said, okay, got it. Got it, I said, expecting the usual, how do I find those? Or where would be a good place to start? Yep, got it. And he did. He came back with a buffet of different measures from prior research, complete with opinions and analysis about what would work best for us. It was like working with an experienced graduate student. Naturally, Connor plans on going to graduate school, specifically for clinical psychology, and ultimately he'd like to open his own practice to help improve the well-being of others. I'll just close by saying, Congratulations, Connor. Hi, I'm Craig Klein with the Department of Social Work at Shepherd University, and I have the privilege of presenting Raina Edwards McMurrin Scholar Citation. Raina is a graduate of Musselman High School in Inwood, West Virginia. Her parents are Tanya Edwards Dillo, and William Edwards is her father, Curtis Dillo is her stepfather. Raina is a senior in the social work program at Shepherd University, and during her time in the program, she has excelled academically. Raina is also a member of the Phi Kappa Phi Honor Society. While at Shepherd, Raina has written extensively about risk factors associated with foster care entry for children on the autism spectrum, and she's also written about the impact of the West Virginia Opioid Reduction Act on opioid use in West Virginia. Recently, Raina completed a 600-hour senior internship through the Project AWARE program at Spring Mills Primary School. And Raina has modeled the values of the social work profession throughout her time at Shepherd University. Raina was recently accepted to the Master of Social Work program at West Virginia University, where she'll begin her studies this fall. Congratulations, Raina, and best of luck at West Virginia University. Hello, I'm Karen Green, Chair of the Department of Social Work. On behalf of the faculty of the Shepherd Social Work program, I'm pleased and proud to present Hannah Warner as a McMurrin Scholar. Hannah is the daughter of Lucinda and Ted Warner and is from Circleville, West Virginia. In addition to her academic achievements, we would like to recognize Hannah's professional growth and contributions to our community through her field education placement this year. Hannah completed over 500 hours in her internship at the Berkeley Day Report Center this fall and spring, where she spent three days each week learning about social work in the context of a forensic addiction services program. Hannah provided case management, supportive counseling, referrals, and other social work services to clients. Justice involved clients, especially those working toward recovery from addiction, present particular challenges in social work. But Hannah went in with a positive attitude and a goal to learn as much as she could from her field instructor, other staff, and her clients. Hannah quickly established herself as a trustworthy professional who worked to engage clients as unique individuals. She also helped to identify potential gaps in services and researched solutions for further exploration. After graduation, Hannah plans to become a licensed social worker and to pursue her passion for gerontological social work. This is a growing field of social work practice and one which many of our students hesitate to pursue. We have no doubt that Hannah will land exactly where she's needed. She'll bloom and flourish and use her warm and calm presence to bring care and compassion to those in need. Hannah, we wish you all the best. Congratulations. Students, family, and friends, Provost Beard and I thank you for joining us today as we recognize these outstanding scholars. You are the leaders of tomorrow, and we are extremely proud of your remarkable accomplishments.